So for host discovery, let's go to the manual and map. And then we're going to look for host discovery in the manual. To do that, you're going to type forward slash. And then you're going to type host discovery. If you can see here at the bottom what I'm typing, then you can hit enter. And you can see that host discovery, my keywords are highlighted in orange. And the current one is always in the first row. If you want to keep looking through, you just press N. You see, now that's the next one. Now that's the next one, next one, next one, next one, next one, next one. And I kind of want to go back to where I was. Okay, so I'm just going to quit that and then I'm going to do it again to go back to where I was. But I really wanted to show you um, how to navigate through. Okay, so we're going to do host discovery. Okay, so these are the options for host discovery. We're not going to be playing with every single one. But the first one that I want to highlight is TAC SN, and this is called a ping scan or a disable port scan. So if we go to the official website of Nmap, here it gives us a little more information. So this is the no port scan. So this option is specific so that if we do, we use Nmap with this option, it's only going to knock on the doors and see if anyone's in. That's all it's going to do. So it's not going to do a port scan. All right. So a couple of things to note is that it'll send an ICMP echo request, a TCP SYN to 443, a TCP ACK to port 80. And, um, but if it's unprivileged, only a SYN packet will be sent to port 80 and 443. Also, it'll do ARP requests unless the send IP was specified. So I know it's a lot of information, but we'll go through each one. So. To quit the, the manual, we're just going to hit Q. Perfect. Clear our screen. And we're going to do um, we're going to do an Nmap TAC SN in our network. But first, we need to find our IP. So we could do IPA. In here, this will give us, okay, this is our IP address. This is our subnet, forward slash 24. It also gives us our net mask which is the last eight bits. Okay, so what we're going to do then, we'll do an nmap space 192.168.100.0, and then I'm gonna do a slash 24. I'm gonna do space tac sn. And notice that I am running as an unprivileged user. I'm just a normal username, Kali. Hit. And before we hit enter, let's open up our world our Wireshark. Okay, so let's get this puppy running. Enter. Okay, so these are the results. Let me stop this. So the results are in. So it has found one, two, three, and four hosts that are up. The number one is going to be our router or the default gateway. Dot 10 is my machine, as you can see here. And then we have dot 11 and dot 12. So we have two VMs that are up. And yes, that is correct. I have two other VMs besides my Kali up right now. And this just discovered them. One at dot 11 and one at dot 12. At the current moment, we don't have any other information about these VMs. All we know is that we have two machines up in this network and we know their IP addresses, which is a great start. So let me clear this and let's go to Wireshark right now. So we can see that some of the things that it did at first was to do an ARP, send some ARP um, requests. And all it was doing for every single IP address is like, hey, who has what MAC address has this IP address, 244, 245, 246? Tell me, right? So it's just mapping that. So we're not really interested in that. What we're really interested in is what it is sending out. So if we do, if we filter for TCP packets, right? So we'll see that the source, our computer, is sending to dot one a SYN packet, which 
it belongs to the protocol TCP, which is the transmission control protocol. And it is sending it to port 80, right? It's sending a SYN packet to port 80. I don't know if you remember, but here, remember, it says that when executed by an unprivileged user, only SYN packets are sent to ports 80 and port 443 on the target. And that's exactly what we see here. We're sending to this IP address, we're sending a SYN packet to port 80. Here's another one where to the dot two, we're sending a 443 or SYN packet to port 443. Okay. All right, great. So we know that only two of them are up, right? If you remember, the dot 11 and then the dot 12 are up. So let's look for those and see. Let's say IP dot address. Let's do dot 11. And let's see what it did, right? So for dot 11, so dot 10 sent to dot 11, a SYN packet to port 80. Then dot 11 responded to dot 10, which is our computer with a SYN ACK, meaning that the port is open. And then ours responded back with an ACK. Oh no, this is different. Then ours responded with a reset ACK, okay? So this is exactly what it did. So it's just sending SYN packets to port 80. Okay, so what happens if we run this as a privileged account. So let's sudo su enter password. And now we're root. So now we're going to do the same exact thing and see how this changes. Okay, I'm going to start it again. Let's see how the strategy changes or the technique changes based off of the account that we're using now, which Nmemp already told us that it will It'll send more packets. Um, so let's just set this up. We'll do an Nmap 0 for slash 24. So that is the subnet that we wanted to scan. We'll do attack SN because we don't want to do a port scan. We only want to do kind of like a ping scan or just a host discovery scan which is much quicker and less intrusive. And we're going to start Wireshark, start sniffing, hit enter, and boom, there you go. So let's stop Wireshark. I can already tell you that I made a mistake and I'll tell you what in a second, but it's all good. Okay, so what happened here is okay give us dot one it says dot two and dot three is also available but notice that it has something to do with my virtual nic so it has something to do with my host computer which is a windows and then these are dot 11 dot 12 and dot 10 are all oracle virtual box because these are my virtual machines right so dot 11 is a virtual machine that i'm using dot 12 is as well um, and then the dot 10 is my Kali Linux machine so it found all of these so first thing we got to notice is that when we run this as a privileged user we actually get more information back so that's something good for um, good for us to know next thing we were going to do is yikes look at all this okay so I'm just gonna filter through and I'm just going to do IP address equals equals 192.168.100.11. And I'm going to say TCP, okay? Hmm. What if we do TCP? no TCP packets. Okay, so that is the first mistake that I made because remember we read that when a privileged user tries to scan the targets on a local ethernet network, ARP requests are used unless 
send IP was specified. So here it's not utilizing TCP packets. What it's utilizing is our ARP packets, as you can see. And ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol, right? It's what it's a protocol that translates a machine's IP to its MAC address. So the IP is used as at the third layer of the o OSI. Um, yeah, I guess at the third layer of the OSI model, and uh, which is the network layer, and that ARP is a protocol used in the second OSI layer, which is the um, what is it? The data layer, right? Layer one is physical. Layer two is like the is the data layer, right? So let me let's confirm that OSI model layer two. Yeah, the data link layer right there. Okay, perfect. So that's what it's doing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to reopen Wireshark. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to run this again, but with a disable ARP ping. So now it's just going to send regular ICMP packets, TCP packets. All right, you guys ready for this? You're ready, but Wireshark's not ready. Okay, now we're ready. Let's go. Okay, notice how this one's taking a little longer. So the first one was done in 2.05 seconds. The second one is done in 20 seconds. So that's another difference that we're seeing. Okay, so let's stop. Wireshark, because Wireshark likes to go wild. And we're going to do, well, let's filter for TCP. So you see, now we can find TCP packets when we did it without the disable ARP ping, which is right here, guys. TAC, TAC, disable, TAC, ARP ping. So now it's no longer sending the um, ARP packets, not for the discovery but it's now sending a TCP. So we'll notice that let's do TCP and let's just focus in on one of them. IP address is going to be equal to 192.168.100.11. Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> what about 12? <laughs> okay. You know what? No, I'm not gonna work. No. <laughs> okay. So if we just do for the dot 12, we notice that it's sending ping packets, which is an IC ICMP ping request. And that's what it's doing um, here. So it's sending that to, let's see, to that destination. It's not telling us a port that it's sending it to. Yeah, it's just sending these packets, reply, requ request, reply, request. Okay, what about for 11? Yeah, for 11 is the same thing. 11, ICMP, ICMP, request, reply. So I guess here that is how it's finding out, hey, are you alive or not? So it sends it, it sends in echo or a ping request to dot 11 and then dot 11 responds right away with a reply but i'm surprised that we read that it should be sending we read that it should be sending It should be sending a TCP send to 443, a TCP act to port 80. And I don't see those. Let's see. Uh, let me go to my toolbox to see. How I can filter for, oh, okay. I can probably just filter HTTP. No HTTP, man. None. 
So all we have are ICMP and ARP, it looks like. So let's do a not include. So let's say not ICMP and not ARP. Okay, there we go. So we have a TCP packet here from a really random source. The rest of them, let's say, and not DNS and not SSDP and not TLS. So this leaves us with this. which is not much. Okay, so that's that. All right, so we utilized, so we noticed the differences. We saw that you can run it as a unprivileged user and it's gonna use send uh, send packets and ACK packages to port 80 and 443. And if we run it as a privileged user or root, then we notice that it's sending ICMP packets. Um, if we specify disable ARP ping, or if we don't specify this, then it'll just send ARP packages as we saw the first time. So let's do that right now. We'll do this without it. Okay, we'll stop. And then you can see that all it sends are the ARP packages to every single IP address. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, this little video. Um, I'll see you in the next one.